Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are some tips for using window tiling on your Mac. So you can move the windows on your Mac's desktop around as you like, and you can resize windows within their own limits. There are some features that allow you to quickly and easily tile the windows. For instance, putting one window on the left half and one on the right half. Here are some tips for using all those window tiling functions, a lot of which are new in macOS Sequoia. So there are a lot of different ways to access the same window tiling functions. For instance, with the window selected, you can go to the window menu, and then you could see under move and resize most of the window tiling functions right there. But you can also access many of the same things by moving your pointer over the green button, and then you see graphic representations of these different options. In addition to that, notice in the menu here, there are keyboard shortcuts for accessing these. The little globe represents the globe or FN key on your keyboard, and the symbol before it is the control key. So for instance, control and then FN and the left arrow will take the current window and make it fill exactly the left half of the screen. You could also drag to tile the windows. So I could drag this window here, and if I drag it to the left, notice how it outlines the left half and I can drop it to actually have the window snap to the left half of the screen. You can also drag to the top to have it fill the screen as well. And if you drag to a corner, like the top right corner here, you can see how it would fill the top right corner. Now you get even more options when you use the option key with some of these. For instance, if you go to window and then go to move and resize, hold the option key down and notice how under arrange here, some of these will change. So instead of left and right, I get the left and the right two quarters. Instead of bottom and top, I get bottom and quarters. You also get variations when you move the pointer over the green button here to bring up the menu. Notice how when I hold the option key down, seven out of the eight choices will change to other options. If you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. So now let's take a look at some hidden functionality or functionality that's not readily apparent. For instance, if I were to take this window here, go to Window, and then Center, and you can see how it centers the window, but it doesn't change its size. But let's say I wanted to change its size while keeping it centered. If I were to drag a corner, then the top left corner moves and it's no longer centered. However, if I center and then grab a corner but hold the option key down, it will actually resize with the center staying in the middle. So I can move to the left or right to make it wider or up or down to make it taller. But because it's moving both the sides or the top and bottom at the same time, it keeps the center in the middle. The same thing if I click and drag the top holding the option key down. The top and bottom change at the same time, and either the left or right side with the option key down will change the side, but both sides at the same time, so the center remains in the middle. Now here's a little more info about how dragging the sides and corners work. Just dragging a side by itself drags that side, the same with a corner. But if you hold the option key down, it drags that side or that corner in the opposite side or corner as well. So option drag the right side, and the right and left side will both move. Option drag the top or bottom, and both the top or bottom move. If you do it with any corner, then that corner and the opposite corner move, which means that all four sides will move, and you can resize the window like that, as long as you're holding down the option key. Double clicking does something similar. If I were to double click on the top of a window, it snaps to the top. If I were to double click on a side, it snaps to the side like that. If you hold the option key down and click, it does the side or the corner and the opposite side or corner. So option double click the left side makes both sides expand to the left or right side of the screen. If you option double click a corner, it makes this corner expand to the top left and the opposite corner expand or an alternative way to fill the screen. Now, I know a lot of people like to have their hard drives or maybe some other files or folders visible in the Finder window. And usually these are on the right side. When you sort them, it starts at the top right. So you've got icons here, but if you take a window and then change it so that it fills, it will then hide the items there. Just because you fill it doesn't mean you can't then 
alter what it looks like. Drag it from the right over a little bit. And now you've got a way where the window is pretty much still filling the space, but you still have access to the items on your desktop. You could also, if you like, go to Window, Move and Resize, and Left, or use the keyboard shortcut, and then drag the right side over to where you want. Now let's say you want to have one window on the left and one window on the right, each taking up half the screen. You can use the green button here, and you can use Fill and Arrange like that. Now you've got two that are equal halves. But suppose you don't want equal halves. You want more space for notes than you do for text edit. You could go to the text edit window, move that to the right, and then move the text edit window over to the right to match it. But notice that when you use halves like this, and you move your pointer over the center, this little handle appears here in the middle of the screen. It's easy to miss or not notice that it's there. If you drag above it or below it, it will just move the current window. But if you drag the handle, it actually moves the border with both windows changing sizes. So I could move with one motion to make the text edit window smaller and the notes window larger. But there's another method you could use to do this. You could take this window here and you can use any method to make that the right half. Now you can shrink this down like that. Get it to be the size you want. Now when you go to this window, and you make this one the left half, notice it won't be exactly half. It will match the other window perfectly. So when you tile windows, you could take the current window and then you could set it to left half, right half, top, bottom, or one of the quarters, then go to the next window that you want to tile and then set that to where you want. But you could also use these arrange options here to do multiple windows at once. When you do so, the order matters. Notice how notes is at the top Directly underneath it is the Safari window. Behind that is Pages. So every window has its own layer, one on top of the other. So when you use these options here, it's going to use that order to put them in the right place. So if I were to select this one here, the current window would be where the black rectangle is on the left. The two gray ones would be the second and third windows in that arrangement. So I could select this, and you could see how it puts notes to the left, and then it figured out that Safari was just behind that, so it's at the top, and Pages was just behind that, so it's at the bottom. Now, not all tiling functions are new in Sequoia. For years, we've had the ability to snap to window edges. So, for instance, I could take this window here, and it'll kind of snap here to the left and also to the top. There's a little bit of resistance as I'm dragging to move past that. And then if I were to say resize this and then take this window. If I push to the left, it will kind of snap right there to the right side of this window here. There's resistance and I can certainly push past it, but it's very easy to match it perfectly. So I can move this window up to the top to match this window here on the left and do the same thing with other windows. I can drag this up, take this window here, and there's a little bit of resistance here right where the top of the Pages window matches the bottom of Safari and the left of the Pages window matches the right side of Notes. Now you may notice that when you go to the Window menu, you have the option to fill the screen, which would take a window like Pages and do this. The window is not in full screen mode. That's a completely different thing. It's just a regular window, but its height and width are completely filling the available space on the screen. However, there's also this option here, Zoom. And you may think that Zoom does the same thing, and indeed it often does. For instance, here in Notes, if I were to use Window Fill, that's what I get. If I were to use Window Zoom, I seem to get exactly the same thing. But let's try that in Pages. Window Fill, we've already seen, but Window Zoom doesn't do that at all. Window Zoom actually makes the window a little smaller. What Windows Zoom is doing is it's asking the app what the largest size the window should be and not any larger than is needed. So notice here, I've got margins here on the left and right side of the page in pages. These aren't needed. So when I do Zoom, it actually removes them. So Zoom and Fill are two different things. Now, when I mentioned all the different ways to use window tiling at the start of this video, I didn't mention one, and that is to double-click the title bar. 
So for instance, if I take notes here and I double click in the title bar here, I get the window filling the space. If I do it in pages, I double click, you could see it actually is zooming, not filling. Double clicking the title bar is actually customizable. If you go to system settings and then to desktop and dock, it's double click a Windows title bar two, and you can see it's set to zoom, which is why it behaved that way in pages. I can actually have it minimize the window if I want, do nothing if I find I accidentally double click the title bar sometimes and I just want it to do nothing, or I can have it always fill. So if I change it from zoom to fill, and I go back to pages. If I double click the title bar now, it fills. If this is how you want it, you may want to go and change that setting. Now there's some other settings you may want to change as well. A lot of people don't like how if you drag the window around, it could accidentally maybe fill the right half, or maybe you drag it to the top and it fills the entire screen like that. I would rather have that turned off. That is here in system settings under desktop and dock, go down to windows and there's drag windows to screen edges to tile and also drag windows to the menu bar to fill screen. So if you find you accidentally trigger those, turn one or both of these options off. Now, even if you have these turned off, you can still drag to tile as long as you add this third option on. Hold the option key while dragging windows to tile. If that's on, but the other two are off, then regular dragging won't do anything. But holding the option key will still allow you to easily drag left or right into the corners, up to the top to fill the screen and everything. Now you may have noticed how when I fill the screen with a window like this, or even drag it to the sides, it fills all the way to the edge. If you don't see that, if you see a big margin between the top, bottom, and sides, then you probably have the setting tiled windows have margins turned on. That's on, then you get those margins. I know a lot of people don't like those, so you may want to turn those off as I have. Another interesting thing about window tiling you may not have noticed is that if you tile a window, like for instance, I'll take this to the right half like that, it remembers its previous size. So notice if I drag here, it goes back to its size. That doesn't happen if you manually position the window. So if I manually put it here at the top right and I manually take the bottom left corner and resize it, well, that's just the size of the window now. But if I were to double click it here to have it fill and then drag away, you can see how it returns to its previous size. Now, occasionally you run into a window that has a lot of information there. And when you make it fit into say a half like that, maybe there's not enough space for the content. In some apps, you can break out windows to show specific content. So for instance, here in notes, if I double click on the note, it breaks out the note into its own window like that. I could take this window and have it fill the right half. And you see how I have a lot more space here for the actual note itself. Mail does that with messages. You can double click a message here and break it out into its own window. The messages app also allows you to break out individual conversations by double clicking on that. And then you could just have that one conversation here. There's no way for window tiling to remember a specific setup like pages on the left, notes on the right, but you can use shortcuts to create things like that. So in the shortcuts app, I'm going to create a new shortcut here and I'm gonna search for windows. And the first option here is find windows. I'll double click that and use this to locate a window. So I'm going to find all windows, add a filter and say the app name is, and then have it be something like say pages. So it's going to find all windows where the app name is pages. I'll have it limited to a single window. So whatever the first pages window is. Then I'm going to use resize window. I'll double click there to add that. And you can see how it feeds the results of this into this. So resize the windows from here to, and then I can choose some of those tiling options like left half. I could show more here and make sure I have bring to front turned on. Now I could do the same thing again, find windows. But in this case, I'm going to filter and say app name is notes. I'm going to limit one and resize that, and it's going to feed the result from this into here, and I'm gonna have this go to the right half. Now I can call this pages left, notes 
right, or whatever I want. I can go to the details here and I can have it added to the menu bar. I could also set up a keyboard shortcut for it if I want. Now, without shortcuts even running, I could go up here since I pinned it to the menu bar. And if I run this, you could see it will take pages, put it on the left, note, put it on the right, just like I specified. So you could set up several of these shortcuts to have predefined tiling sets. I hope you found these Windows tiling tips useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.